Well, it's a privilege for me to be here uh, and share this message that has been simmering and, and marinating here for, for a little bit, you know, for a while. And I think it's, a, the, the, uh, it's a, uh, a good timing to share it because now the resolutions of New Year and those goals that you and I, you know, were thinking about at the beginning of the, of the, of the year 2020, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, now uh, reality is sinking in, right? How many of you bought a, a Fitbit, you know, uh, uh, an, an Apple Watch, or you join the gym, you bought maybe a treadmill, or whatever it is that, you know, is related to, I'm going to uh, exercise this year. No, even if I just go a little bit and walk, or you decided just to take, you know, a walk, walking, you know, outside your house, whatever it is, and then you bought maybe a, something to help you, right? A Fitbit, how many, you know, the new one, I think it's the Versa, something like that, right here, Gordon has one of those, and uh, maybe, you know, something else that, that can help you, uh, you know, motivate you. And maybe by this time, you know, it's February the, the 9th, uh, you're like, oh man, you know, uh, the, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough, right? It's the, the being able to keep up with it because life happens and you're, now you're, you're, the emotion and the motivation of the new year is now like, okay, uh, where is it? <laughs> uh, I want to feel it again, right? But no, don't worry. It's always a good time to pick it up, back up. If you're, if you're saying, you know what, I, I wanted to and I haven't been able to uh, always get back in the race. And today, I want to share with you something related about that. And let me see if I can read from the Bible here uh, the, the uh, actual text. And um, I didn't bring my reading glasses. I'm 47 now and I'm realizing, man, uh, I need reading glasses and um, I bought some at, um, I think it was Sam's or Costco, and they got a little packet with four, and it was 1.0, right? And I said, okay, I'm just going to start from 1.0, right? I'm not going to go like, you know, two or three, because then I, I'm like walking in a different, you know, in a different galaxy or something, you know, a parallel world, right? It looks very different. But I, I bought 1.0, um, and man, it's like, the contrast, I, I wore them, you know, and I was reading my, my Bible on the phone, and he's like, wow, my phone, for, you know, it's an it's a, it's a iPhone 6, and all of a sudden turned into an iPhone 11. I was like, <laughs> wow, so cool, 4K, and I mean, it's just amazing. So I bought the, uh, the packet, you know, that little packet of four, so I put one in my, night, my nightstand, one in my, on my desk. I have one here in my office and one in the kitchen, so uh, whatever I need to read something, I just grab it. I didn't bring it today, so you know, be, bear with me because I'm going to see. Pastor Tim has a, a lot better eyesight than me. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, uh, verses uh, 24 to 27. You can look it up in your, in your Bible on, on your phone. 1 Corinthians 9. And 24 to 27, I want to set this up because uh, uh, for some people it might be something that, well, pastor, I don't exercise a lot. I'm not very knowledgeable. And some people are, you know, uh, they work out a lot and that's great. But I want to make sure that all of us uh, are relating not just to the, 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 the message and the illustration, but the, but the bottom line that, that, that we're going to read here in, second, in 1 Corinthians 9. It says in 24, Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win, says the Apostle Paul. Run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. Okay? All athletes are disciplined in their training. The Apostle Paul is using this example or analogy of an athlete. So working out and exercise and fitness is nothing new to our modern day world. The Apostle Paul already had this, you know, going on back in the, in the ancient times. They were already athletes. In fact, the, 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 the Olympics were born in, in, in Greece, right? Uh, many, 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 many years ago, centuries ago, and, um, and, and an interest, interesting fact about the, uh, the, the Olympics is that the athletes they didn't wear the you know they didn't wear the cools uh, Under Armour, uh, Nike, Adidas, whatever brand it is. They worked out and performed all of their uh, uh, exercises and, and, and disciplines with no clothes. Nike, yeah, it's a jaber, you know, like they say, right? It was like, whoa, man, I don't want to, you know. 
I don't know. But anyway, that was like, <laughs> I'm so glad that now we have Nike and, you know, <laughs> Under Armour. So the Apostle Paul taking uh, some of those uh, uh, analogies and they said, you know, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize. So I run with purpose. I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I'm just not punching the air, you know, with no purpose and no intentionality. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete. You see, Paul mentioned it. You know, hey, the, uh, physical exercise has some benefits, but piety and, you know, and, good, and, 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 a, and a godly life is better, of course. But there are some benefits, Paul says in 2 Timothy. But says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So the Apostle Paul was talking about training and working out and exercising. Today, I want to talk to you about faith like a muscle. That's one of my favorite emojis, you know, if, uh, using nowadays because it just, it just, I just don't have sometimes the words to say, man, that was so, and I just don't know, and I just put an emoji, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> that was awesome, right? There was a lot of punch in there. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes you, you can't say, you know, or you, you don't, you want to express it better, you know, and you just put an emoji, right? It's like a happy face or like, you know, the typical with the, with the laughing and the, and the little tears, right? Or maybe, a, uh, do you use the ballerina, the one that goes like this? You know, it's like, hey, you know, or maybe, a <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, and then they put the ballerina. But anyway, this is one of my favorite emojis, you know, it's like, ah, or maybe the hand like this, right? It's like, yes, or maybe like the... Thumbs up, right? So faith is like a muscle. And Apostle Paul was talking in 1 Corinthians 9 that uh, he trains, you know, that we got to train it. And there's a lot of uh, things that we can learn about working out. And not that you need to join a gym or that you need to get in, in, in an exercise uh, uh, program or anything like that. It's, it's because there's a lot of things we can learn because faith is like a muscle. When you use your faith, when you use your muscle, muscle, it grows. When you use your muscle, it grows. When you don't use it, it atrophies, right? In fact, it's proven now that if we don't use our muscles, either, you know, working out or in our work or at home or doing something, we lose muscle mass. And you don't want to do that. And um, I'm trying to, you know, get back to... Uh, a better uh, discipline because, you know, now I'm 47, reaching 50, and I'm thinking, man, uh, I have to at least have a, a consistency in working out because I don't want to lose muscle mass. You know, it helps in, in everything else in, in your body. It helps you. So um, there's a lot of things that we can learn about exercising our faith because faith is like a muscle. The more you use it, the, the stronger you're going to get. Number one. I learned a lot of uh, things, and I wanted to share some of those with you uh, that I learned working out with my son. My son is now 17. He, uh, we started working out when he was in middle school a little bit at a time, and then now he's a lot bigger than me, well, you know, heavier than me. He plays football, and now he's training me because I was uh, doing some things that I just, you know, uh, I was kept on doing from a long time ago, but now that he knows more because, you know, in, in, in training, he told me, Dad... There are some things that you got wrong, you know, I need to teach you, all right? You need to change. So, um, yeah, so I had to do that, but it helped me a lot. Number one, there's power in repetition. There is power in repetition. Repetition is annoying. It's annoying, I know. When I think about it, I was like, man, is there any other way to get better, to learn, to memorize, to, you know, do something like that that doesn't require repetition, Right? Because it's annoying. It's like tedious. It's like monotonous. But repetition from a long time ago, even God used or told us, hey, there is power in repetition. Let's look at this verse right here. Deut Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Listen, O Israel. This is the Lord uh, talking to the people of Israel. 
back in, in um, when they were just uh, got out of Egypt. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must, be, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them. There it is. Repeat them. And not only says repeat them, it says repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. There is power in repetition. There's a reason why God instructed them. You have to repeat them to your children and again and again and again. You know why? Because the things that God deposits sometimes in our hearts, sometimes the, you know, the parable of the sower, the devil wants to snatch it away. Sometimes it just leaks out. Sometimes we just forget, but we just no, don't rely on that. Oh, yeah, I got it all. It's all here. Sometimes we just, you know, we have to repeat them to us again and again and, and again with the purpose that they stay with us. How can a young man clean his life, live a clean life before you by keeping your word? In my heart, I have hidden your word so that I not, might, might not sin against you. Keep him here. Sometimes we rely a lot or we think like, no, I got it, you know, and that's okay. But that's why we come every Sunday and, you know, we worship. And for some of you, some things might be repeti you know, very repetitive in church. Oh, well, I know already we're going to go there and sing maybe two, three songs, four. You know, we sang four, four songs today. And then somebody's going to say a greeting, welcome. You know, we're going to uh, do the offerings and then the message and all. You know, it might seem repetitive, but there's a reason why. There is a reason why. There is power in, re in repetition, in repeating them over and over again, because then with time it's going to stick to us. It's finally going to say, yes, Lord, I got it. I got it. Repetition. There's a power in there. Philippians, on the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talking to the Philippians says, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. See, keep putting into practice everything you heard and you received from me. Keep repeating them. Repeat, the, you know, repeat them and learn them and keep putting them into practice again and again and over and over again. There is power in repetition. Pre repetition, you know, is, uh, the, the, the power of repetition is because practice makes permanent. And you say, wait a minute, Pastor, you know, I, I don't think it goes like that. Practice makes permanent. No, practice makes perfect, yes. But I, I also wanted to change it because practice makes permanent. What you repeat over and over and over again in any area of your life, it becomes permanent. Yes, you're going to get good at it, but you need to remember it becomes permanent. So you need to make sure that you practice the right way. Because if you practice the wrong way, you'll be perfect at doing it the wrong way, right? I get up in the morning, and if I repeat my same habits and routine and behavior of checking my Facebook first and checking, you know, what's going on, you know, in social media, and I do that, yes, I'm going to get very good at it. But just like working out. It's not about just like, yeah, I'm lifting up, you know, 180, 200 pounds, yeah. But if you're doing it wrong, you know, I've, I've been, you know, when you go to the gym, I always get a kick out of the, you know, some of the uh, guys that go there, and they go and, and they grab one of the barbells, you know, one of those uh, bells and, or uh, the barbells, and they just go like this, and they start doing like this. Yeah, you know, whoa, 80 and 80, right? And they're like, wow. Yeah, and they're like, what are they doing? Why are they swinging like this? You know, it's like, because it's a lot easier, right? Why don't they just go? They got to stand and do it and just focus, right? But they go like this. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you can do a lot of like that, but you're doing it the wrong way. And when they go, you know, when you get used to doing it the wrong way, you're going to get very good at it, right? Practice makes perfect. Yeah, perfectly wrong, right? 
Nobody wants to practice the wrong way and get it perfectly wrong. That's why practice makes permanent. Make sure you're doing the right form. Even, you know, trainers tell you, work on your form. Don't worry about the weight, how much you want to, because, you know, all of us, especially guys, you know, we want to get there and like, oh, yeah, I put, you know, a lot of weight. Up. Yeah, as long as I do it, you know, it counts. No, work on your form. The form is better than how much weight. You'll get there by doing it right. So practice makes permanent. Practice the right way. Think about, Lord, what are some of those things that I need, that I've been practicing that I need to change? Psalms 139 says, search me, O Lord, and test my heart. See that if there's anything that offends you and show me the way of life. Is there anything that I'm practicing wrong, Lord? Anything that I've been, you know, repeating, but the wrong form, the wrong shape, the wrong way. I don't want to get it perfectly wrong. I want to get it right. And when once I am working on doing it the right way, I know it's going to become permanent. So practice makes permanent. Consistency allows an opportunity to see growth and breakthrough. Now, repetition is not just once doing it once or twice, not even three times. You know, and that's one of the hard things to learn sometimes, that it takes, you know, again and again and again. It takes consistency. Nobody goes to the gym and signs, signs up and say, okay, you know, I came here once and twice or twice or maybe a week. Where, where's my sick pack? You know, I don't see my sick pack. Where's, where's my bicep? You know, where, where is it? You know, get my money back. Hey, no, you got to. Go consistently. Consistency allows an opportunity to see growth and breakthrough. When you come consistently to the house of God, when you worship consistently here at home, when you consistently practice and do what you learn here, when you hear about, you know, the message that our pastor gives, you know, brings every Sunday, and you come consistently, and you practice it consistently, and you go home and do it consistently, then you will see growth. Then you will start seeing breakthrough. And you, you're going to see that, wow, because I allowed, you know, the longer the consistency, God was able to work in me and see growth and to see a breakthrough. But if I just go a few days, and I say, God, where are you? Why aren't you working in my finances, in my marriage, in my family, in my life? What, what's going on? But you, the consistency was only this, you know, this much. God says, hey, I love you, and I'm so glad that you're trying, but I want to do something in you, but allow me to do that. Give me more consistency. Because then when you're working at it, then I'm going to say, yeah, here. Bow over here, and then you start seeing changes, and you start seeing the difference, and you start seeing results over time. So consistency allows an opportunity to see growth and breakthrough. So come, yes, worship, give, be consistent in those practices. That's why Paul said, hey, keep putting into practice all you heard and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, keep putting it into practice. Once, you know, once or twice or a few times, it's, 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 not a, it's not repetition. There's no power in it. Pastor, I came and now I gave it a try in January, you know, when Pastor was talking about our 2020 vision and all of that. And man, didn't work. Like, what do you mean? Well, I came and came a couple of times and I didn't see anything happen. Yeah, because... That's not consistency. That's just, you know, it's good that you come, but it's more um, emotion or motivation based on, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling it, right? But when you don't feel it, man, you got to allow consistency to see breakthrough and, and growth. Number two, growth takes time. One of the hardest things about exercising and our exercise in our faith is that it takes time to see results. Very simple. It takes time. Just like I was saying, the consistency. Imagine if you go work out 
or whatever it is that you're working on, right? It doesn't have to be exercise, but whatever it is that you, know, that you say, you know, I'm, I'm working on this, something at work, something in my personal life. But imagine you go to the gym, and then you sit on that bench, and then you start, you know, exercising, and then you grab one of those dumbbells, and then you go and, and stand in front of the, you know, the mirror, you know? <laughs> it's always funny, right, that when you stand in the mirror, like, you got to look good to do these biceps, you know? It's like, and you go there, and you start lifting, and you do one, pow, and then all of, all of a sudden you hear a pop, pow, 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 pow. It's like, man, this is working. I was like, man, immediate results, right? It's like, who wouldn't go to the gym that way? I mean, the gyms would be packed, you know, hey, I'm going to the gym, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Yeah, okay, go, yeah. Immediately, instantaneous results. That's easy. But it doesn't work that way. Growth takes time, and that's one of the hardest things. And in the Christian life, sometimes we come in, Pastor, I, 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 was, I was hoping to see change, and, you know, it's been a week, and nothing has happened. Well, God can work in miraculous ways, but also he can say, hey, I'm working in your life, and it took you 20 years to get in this mess, and I'm going to work in a process with you, and I'm going to show you. Just be consistent. It's going to take a little time, but don't give up. Don't give up. We set ourselves up for disappointment when we expect immediate results. We're just setting ourselves up for that. Yeah, where am I, you know, my bicep? Well, hey, man, doesn't work like that. Where's my faith, you know? Where's my breakthrough, God? Where's my family getting together? I didn't see anything happen. My, my husband still, you know, doing the same things in our marriage. It still doesn't look like it's, it's going to get any better. Where's my result? Hey, it takes time. It takes time. It's a process. God wants to transform you and shape you, even through those difficult times, even through those, you know, waiting periods. It just takes time. So we, we set ourselves and say, God, I was expecting, I was hoping, but said, no, hey, I'm working. I'm working. I love that song that we sing here, you know, because sometimes, you know, we hope and we don't see changes we don't see God working. We don't see God moving. And, and, and we, we kind of want, you know, in our human nature, we, we wonder, God, are you even there? Are you even working? Are you even, you know, paying attention to, to you know, I'm trying. And then you remember when you come here or when you sing it at home, you know, that song that we, that we sing, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Remember that song, Waymaker? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. That's one of my favorite parts to sing. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. God, what's going on with my marriage? What's going on in my finances? What's going on with my son, my daughter? What's, what's going on with this friend of mine that keeps getting into that you know, mess, the addiction and whatever dysfunction they're in? I don't see nothing happening. But even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. It just takes time. I know you're working. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Because I know even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. And you encourage yourself, saying, God, yeah, it's going to take time. But you're still working. You grow when you push through the struggle. That struggle, you know, it's like, oh, I don't see it. But I know you're working. You're still working on my behalf because the one who started the, the good work will complete it. You're faithful to your promises, and your promises still stand. So whatever God started in your life, in your family, in your, maybe in your business, maybe in your personal life, God will not leave it unfinished. He will finish it. He will complete it in your life. 
even when you don't feel it, even when you don't see it. So don't give up, because at the right time, you will see that harvest. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Growth takes time, but in that waiting, in that time, God is working in you something even better and bigger. I'm working in you character and confidence and endurance, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making you stronger. Even in that weight, even when you don't see anything happening, I'm still working in you because I'm faithful, and I'm not going to leave you halfway done. I will complete my work in you, and my promises will come true in my life. Stay the course. Stay the course. Number three, working out, exercising, or in any other discipline or or sports, sometimes you hit a plateau, right? You know what I mean? What a plateau is like you hit a wall. You hit something like, man, I've been stuck in this place for a little while now. I haven't, you know, when I started, I saw progress and, you know, continuous progress and improvement. But then I feel like I, I hit this plateau, this, this flat line that I'm, I don't see myself, you know, improving. Yes, I went there, but then I, I kind of got there and, and I stay there, right? And, and maybe some of you say, yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. And, and when you hit a plateau, do something different. Because we can get stuck in that rut of doing the same things the same way all the time. We go through the motions. And sometimes we have to shake up, you know, things. And even coming to church, even our relationship with God, I've had to do that. I've had to do that and say, God, it seems like I'm just going through the motions. Because obviously, you know, being in ministry, you are, you, you're doing a lot of these things. But you, I run the risk of just going through the motions. You know, it's like, yeah, it's just another day at the office, you know. And just go through the motions and do it and without even being conscious of what I'm doing and the impact that it's having in eternity in people's lives. I, I can run the risk of just hitting a plateau and go through the motions. And I come here, it's like, yeah, I know that song, you know, even though when I'm, I'm singing it. You know, and I'm singing, you know, normally, but I'm feeling like I'm going through the motions. And maybe someone here feels like it's just going through the motions of life. It's like, Lord, I just don't feel anything. I just don't feel like there's, a, you know, there's excitement in my life. I, I feel like I'm just going in this routine and, and I hit a plateau and, and, and I feel like I'm just going through the motions, right? It just feels like that. And in, even in my spiritual life, you know, I feel like that. What, God, where are you? I don't even feel you the same way I felt you before. before. So, God, where are you? I don't want to go through the motions. So when you hit a plateau, do something different. Change the routine. There's something that is called in, in exercises muscle confusion, When you're doing the same thing over and over again and working out the same area, the same muscles, your muscles develop something that is muscle memory, right? And they already know how to get there, right? They already have developed that without even thinking. You know, even if you, you, you stop working out for two, three weeks and then you come back, your muscles have memory and they can get back faster and easier than, you know, if you would have started, you know, in the first time. So your muscles have memory, and then you just go through the motions. But God, I don't want to go through the motions. When you're here, I want to be aware that your presence is here. When I'm at home, I want to be aware that, yes, the presence of God is at home with me too. When I go to work, when you go to school, students, when you go to school, you be aware that God is right there with you. Don't just go through the motions of, yeah, I do church on Sundays, you know, and, and that's it. And then you go back to the same. No, this is not a, a routine, like a mindless routine and, 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 and monotonous. We know nothing in it for us. We're engaged in it. So when you, we hit that plateau, change it up. Change the routine. That happened to me. You know, I've been working, for two, working out for two years. And my son recently told me, he said, Dad, and it, was, it hurt me, right? Because uh, uh, he told me the truth, and the truth hurts sometimes, you know, or most of the times. And he said, Dad, you've been doing the same exercises for two years. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, you've been doing the same circuit, you know, for two years. And it's like, you got to change it up. It's like, yes, you're right. I've been doing it for a long time, right? Come on. He told me, hey, come over here. 
why don't you do what I, you know, sometimes do this, these exercises. Like, oh, okay. And I was trying to, you know, say, well, maybe now nah, I don't want to get hurt. Son, I'm 47, you know, you're like 17, I mean 16, and, and you're strong, and, and oh, you're old man, you know, I just got to take care of my, my back. And uh, I was trying to give a lot of excuses because it's easy to stay right there where it's comfortable, right? But no one grows in your comfort zone. Nobody grows when you stay in that comfort zone. You have to step out of that comfort zone, and then you'll see growth right? Nobody grows staying in the same comfortable, predictable routine. You have to step out and change it up because I had hit that plateau. And, and he told me, come on, you know, do this with me. And there were different exercises. There were different things that I was, man, I don't even know if I can do this. I don't even know if I'm able to do that. Maybe what if I, you know, hurt my back or what if I can do it? And he said, no, you just do it right. You know, take it easy, but just change it up. And I did. And I was so exhausted and I was so tired and I was like, man. But then I felt like, wow, I feel something different. I feel areas or muscles or, you know, things, you know, in my, in my arms or in, 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 in this part of my body that was like, man, I, I don't remember ever feeling that. Right. I didn't even know I had that. So I said, Wow. But well, you change it up and say, Lord, I've been tied in the same like since 20 years ago. Yes, my income has come up, has increased, but I've been stuck in this, right? And when I think about it, and Pastor Tim talked about, hey, take a step of faith. And I'm like, oh, and then you come up with a lot of excuses like I did. Or like, well, what about this? What about that? And then you say, no, just change it up. Let me take a step of faith. I've been treating my husband the same way, and for some reason it doesn't work. My wife has been hearing me complain about, you know, whatever, and I'm going to change it up. Instead of complaining, I'm going to say, this is the Lord, that the, the, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. How you doing, honey? Here's coffee for you. <laughs> They're going to start praying for you. It's like, man, this guy, are you okay? You know, <laughs> are you okay? Bring me the thermometer, you know. <laughs> But you change it up, and things start like, whoa, I didn't even know we could do that. I didn't even know that God was, the, you know, I didn't, and then you start seeing things differently, and you're like, wow, I'm growing. I thought I already, you know, there was not much for me to do, learn, see, whatever, but then God says, hey, trust me, I'm, on the, I'm the infinite God. If I teach you something, you think I'm going to run out of things for you to, 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 you know, to wow you and surprise you? I'm the infinite God. Try me. Change it up. Do something different. Get out of that rut. Don't go through the motions here, at home, in your, in your life, at work, in your spiritual life. Change it up. Don't, don't get through, you know, don't just go through the motions. Put, you know, you engage 100% in it, and you'll, like, you, you'll realize, wow, yes, yes. There's something new. God can do something new. Number four, we're almost finished. Number four, work the core. The core is the, the, basically the muscles that are basically in this trunk of the body, right? Now, most people work out the muscles that are most visible, but forget to work out their core. Because the core is not fun. Working the core is not, you know, exciting. Working the core is like, oh, doing planks, you know. Why do I have to do planks? Why do I have to do abs, you know? You know, I cannot wear, I cannot wear my, you know, my, my, my shirt like this, you know, so I can show them off if I work them out, you know. I can take a picture, you know, in the bathroom like this, you know. <laughs> but that's all I can do, you know. They're not visible, right? <laughs> but the, the core is so essential because the core not only, you know, uh, it's the central, the central main muscles that we have, they also help the other muscles. It's like everything is, is based, you know, consolidated right there in the core. When you, when you, um, when you're, you know, this, whatever, you know, if, you, if you're hurting, you know, from here and you try to sneeze, how do you feel? You're like, oh, no, no, no. You know, you try to, to avoid sneezing, right? Avoid coughing like, no, my, my hurts, my stuff, right? Because that's the core. Even sneezing and coughing, just cough. You feel it. 
actually right there in other areas, but it's basically the trunk. But a lot of people don't want to work out that area. They want to work out the muscles that are visible, right? The bicep, yeah, you know, because I want to work out a little bit and show it off, right? Those are the muscles that people want to work out, you know, the ones that are easy, the ones that everybody sees, Right? And in our spiritual life, we've got to remember, God, I just don't want to work the easy things, right? Yeah, I, I memorize, you know, uh, uh, the verse, and you go, you know, visible, oh, Instagram, right? I'm doing my devotional, right? And then you already put in all of that. Yeah, look, yeah. Well, that's good. That's all right. But are you working the core? Or are you just doing things so you can look good? So it looks that you are spiritual, that you are, you know, uh, that, that you are devoted or that you're, you know, in it just because how it looks. Remember, God doesn't look at that. God says, hey, it's 1 Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God looks at the core. God, I just don't want to work, you know, or work out the areas that are visible. Yeah, right? You know, the things that, that everybody can see, that's all right. But God, work in me even deeper. Go to the core. I don't want to forget those, the, you know, that area in my life. And then Matthew 15, 17 to 18, Jesus talks about the core. It says, don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the per a person's mouth come from the heart. From the core, and these defile them. Those are the things that defile people. Those are the things that you gotta take care. You gotta work the core. Don't forget about it. The Pharisees were, were, were notorious for that. They wanted to work out the biceps and the triceps and the things that people could see so they could receive all the reward, right? Yeah, you're a great Christian. What a great person. What a, and that's all right. You know, you, you got to do some of those things. But they were doing it because they wanted to just show off, right? But they didn't work the core. And Jesus went right there and said, hey, you're, you're working all of this, you know, all your biceps and triceps and all of these things that people can see and you're showing them off. Okay, but guess what? You're unbalanced because you can work out all your biceps and trapsins you want, but what about your legs? You're going to look like chicken legs, you know? You're going to look all, you know, unbalanced like this, and you got to work your core. You got to work your core. Oh, that's not, I don't do core. I don't do abs. I don't do that. I don't do that. Why don't you do that? Uh, because it's not fun. It's hard sometimes. It's, it's not as glamorous, a spiritual core. A relationship with God. The core. Everything just flows out of that relationship. Take care of that. Work, you know, work out your, your relationship with God. Invest in it. Take care of it. Oh, pastor, but nobody sees that. And well, that's right. It's the core. It's the core. Your relationship with God. In this church, our pastor has taught us, you know, for volunteers, uh, we've, we, we've always taught him, hey, whatever we, in whatever area we serve, you got to remember, the foundation is your relationship with God. Everything emanates from it. Your relationship with God, the core. The heart. The core. God, I just don't want to, you know, Work on those external things that are easy. And, and yes, you know, got to work some, you know, those areas too. But my heart, everything flows out of my heart. And in my heart is pure. And in my heart is, is clean. What comes out of my heart will come that way too. But what, what do I gain if I, if I try to clean up all the, you know, the areas around but I don't take care of the pollution that is, that is right there in my core. Hmm? The unforgiveness sometimes that I deal with and I can't get over with. Maybe the, the bitterness that, I'm, that I'm, I'm dealing with. Maybe this jealousy that I have for this coworker or this family member. This hurt that I've been carrying. And if my heart is like that, what do I expect to, you know, water to come out clean? God, 
work in my, in my core. I want to work that core. I want to make sure my heart is clean. If I need to forgive someone, I'll forgive. I won't feel it, you know, I won't feel like forgiving, but you say to forgive. If I want to let go of certain things, addictions, or maybe things that have been, you know, keeping me in bondage, it's hard. But I'm going to let go because I want my heart, my core, to be, to be good, to be clean. Work in my, in my core, Lord. So that's what we got to remember. Don't forget the, the, the core, your character, who you are when no one sees. That's, that's the core, the core. And lastly, uh, this is my last point. You need a spotter. I learned this also recently because, like I mentioned, I was working out the same, way, the same things, you know, for a long time. And then um, he said, hey, my, my son said, hey, but now you're going to work and we're going to put this much weight because if you want to go beyond what you've done before, you're going to have to add more. But don't worry, I'm going to spot you. Because I, I told him, I said, what if, what if I drop it? What if it goes like this? I don't want to look like, yeah, hey, look, you know. <laughs> I've seen that, right? <laughs> One time, uh, I was working out alone, and I put, a, you know, more, I said, hey, I can do this. And I put more weight than I should have. And then I, I lifted, right? I was bench pressing, and I did. One, oh, yeah, I can do another one. Oh, yeah, ah, one more. And that third one, I went down. And I started going up, and it just didn't keep going up. And I was like, oh, no. And you know it, right? Right in that position when you don't have a lot, a lot of leverage, right? It's right there. You know, if it was over here, yeah, it's just one push like that. But it was right here. And I said, oh, no. And I knew it. I can't do it. And it was at a time where the gym was empty. <laughs> it was like, man, I thought, well, Good, but not good, right? Good, nobody's watching, nobody filming, you know, putting me on YouTube, you know, it's like, yeah, I look at Jim Fails, you know, hashtag. And, <laughs> and then I said, I can't do it. And it, it just, I just gave up. It was a lot of weight, and I put it on my chest, and I felt like, <gasps> and I was like, man, I'm, I need to breathe. So I was like looking around, I was like, anybody, <laughs> please, you know. Yoga people all over there. <laughs> Pilates, <laughs> come and help me. Nobody. So what I did was I just squeezed out of that, you know, that bar, and I rested the bar on the bench, and I kept the other, you know, the other side of the bar with the other hand, and I put it like that, and finally I just left, you know, I said, okay, I got out of it. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to go viral, you know, so that's okay. And even if I do, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put in the, hey, this is a, a way how to get out of your, you know, when you're stuck, you know. <laughs> how to get out <laughs> when you get stuck. <laughs> Let's turn it around, right? But anyway, um, he told me, you need, you need a spotter. It's like, well, I can do this. No, you, you need a spotter. You need someone. A personal trainer, you know, a lot of the times. A PT. And um, I said, Okay. And we started. I said, well, I've never lifted this much, but I'm going to try it. And I started doing some, and then we turn around. I mean, we switch and say, okay, now I'm going to spot you. And I was being the spotter to my son, right? And my son put a lot more weight, and I said, okay. And I said, man, that's a lot. Probably he's going to need me, you know, right away. So he did it. And as soon as he, you know, did a, a three or four, I started noticing that he was, you know, kind of working you know, a little harder. And as soon as I saw him uh, struggling, I did this, helped him, boom, and, ra and racked it back. And he got so mad. He's like, Dad, what are you doing? It's like, well, I'm helping you, you know, because I'm your spotter, and I'm trying to help you, you know, get it all the way up. And say, yeah, Dad, but you robbed me of my, of my rep. It's like, what do you mean I robbed you of your rep? He said, yeah, you're not supposed to touch it. You're not supposed to lift it until it goes down. But if I'm struggling right there and it's not going down, even if you see me like this, don't touch it. Because that's when I'm growing. He said, that's when I know that I can max out. But then you touch it. Even if you touch it, he said, no. And so many times 
we are in struggle or we see someone struggle, we see our children struggle and, or, or somebody, and, and, and we run right there immediately to just lift it back and, and rack it for them, and we rob them of their rep. Because it's in that struggle that you're going to realize, God, I need you. And even if I'm struggling right now, it's making me stronger. Remember, character and endurance. And it's making me stronger. And, I, and the spotter, you know, God is your spotter. You know, the Holy Spirit is right there and say, yeah, I know. I'm here with you. But I'm not going to rob you of your rep because I've just come to the rescue. Every time you feel some, some, you know, something uncomfortable in your life, how are you going to grow? How are you going to get stronger? How are you going to get better? If I'm always bailing you out of your situations the way you want me to, I'm going to let you struggle, but I'm here with you. I'm not going to leave you alone. So when I see you struggling, that's right, you're growing your faith. That muscle is growing because you're going to learn, yes, Lord, even in that struggle, I trusted you and I knew you were there. And then it makes you stronger. And then God says, yes. But when it goes down, and when that weight is so much for you and, and it goes down, God says, now I can spot you. Why? Because my grace is sufficient for you. My grace and my power works better in your weakness because when you think you can't do it, then I'm right there. I'm your spotter, and I'm going to help you. And you realize it's not you. It was me. It was me who helped you. It was me who helped you. My, my power works better in your weakness. So... We got a spotter. A spotter will stay close to you. A spotter will encourage you. A spotter will help you in your weakness. A spotter will let you struggle with the weight so you can grow. And listen, this is beautiful. This is the last slide that I have in this verse. And I will ask the Father, Jesus said, and he will give you another advocate, another spotter, a personal trainer right there with you, a comforter, an encourager, a counselor who will never leave you. The Holy Spirit is right there with you to say, hey, you can do it. Come on. You can max out. Your faith is going to grow. Uh, I want to ask you to close your eyes. We're going to finish. And um, I know that this message was a little different. But God is, has spoken, and I know he's speaking to you, all of us here. And I want to make a prayer with a couple, of, a couple of things. The first one is to pray to affirm and seal this word and encourage someone to work out your faith. And the second one is going to be an invitation to come and get to know personally that trainer, that spotter that, that you can have when you give your life to Jesus. So, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, because you want us to grow. You want us to grow in maturity and in our faith. So we want to exercise our faith. So Father, I pray that this word and this message that the Holy Spirit will take it and put it in, a, in, in, in everyone's heart according to their need. And I know you've spoken today, Father. Help us to stay consistent. Help us to not give up, but to understand that with time, you are working in us even when we don't see it, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help us to work out our faith, work our core, our relationship with you, our heart, our character, Walk in the fear of the Lord in everything we say and everything we do. So, Father, I affirm this word. And if there's anything that the Holy Spirit here plays in somebody's heart for a change, to get better, to get stronger, to max out your faith, I pray, Father, that you continue to do that work. And now, if there's anyone here who says, you know what, I, this is all is great, but I, I don't know Jesus, I'm far away from him, I want to have Jesus as my spotter. You can do it today. So I'm going to ask you and give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus today, either for the first time or maybe you drifted away from your faith. 
You gave your life to Jesus. You made a decision to follow him. And for some reason or another, you, drift, you drifted away and distanced yourself from God. It's not too late. You can come back. You can make this prayer and pray this after me. Say, Jesus, I come to you to ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I receive your forgiveness and your new life. I want to follow you. I give myself to you. Teach me to trust you. To do life your way. I'm tired of living my way. I want to follow you now. And Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for making me new. And in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Church, let's put our hands together and, and say thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our church today. Thank you so much.